Everyone is beautiful exactly the way they are. Everyone looks the same. You must subscribe to this, otherwise you're judgmental. And then deep down, we kind of know. <laughs> like, it's hard, to, it's hard to pin down and it's hard to identify, but we know there's such things as physical beauty. The ancients all understood this proportionality, blah, 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 blah. It is true in our faith that we are beautiful in God's eyes, and that includes our body. It's important to remember. It's not just me and my spirit self. We're, as a human person, body and soul. And so God loves us in our bodies. We also believe that our bodies are decaying. And that doesn't take faith. That takes knowledge of myself. And I look at my body and it's not doing so well. Especially after the age of 25, it goes downhill pretty quickly, right? And then eventually it goes downhill all the way. And we bury it in the ground and eventually our uh, vacuum sealed uh, casket will decompose maybe in a thousand years. And the worms will finally get at that corpse that I left a thousand years prior. Our bodies are destined to decay. And yet, the funny thing is, St. Paul goes around preaching the, the story of the gospel. And the central moment of the gospel is Jesus' resurrection of what his body, his resurrected body. And this is so fascinating. When we, when we read the story of St. Thomas in the gospel uh, of John, what does Jesus' body have? Well, first of all, what's kind of fun is Jesus eats fish. He makes a big point. Like, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. Like, wow, he really was raised in the flesh. He's not a ghost. He's not an apparition like the apostles might have thought. He's a guy who eats fish, which makes him, what, human. And he's raised, though, with a glorified body. He can do some things that uh, he wasn't doing before, like come through walls or different things like that. But what does he have in his body? He has wounds. Those things that uh, were the, the greatest mark of shame on one level, uh, the sign of his death, the sign of his mortality and his human nature, he kept them in his resurrected body. That Jesus right now, body and soul, in heaven, in his human nature, has wounds. He has holes in his hands, in his side, in his head, in his feet. Jesus preserved, when he could have done anything he wanted, those wounds, that vulnerability. The word vulnera means wounds in Latin. Vulnerability, his ability to be wounded as man, he's preserved for all eternity to let us see him like Thomas and put our hands in his wounds to know that our Savior is our wounded Savior. And yet, he's not defined by his wounds. His wounds are signs of love for us. When St. Paul was talking about this, he, he mentioned to the Greeks that, and there's a resurrection of the body. And everyone laughed him out of Athens and said, what? What's the thing that causes me most frustration in this life? The, what St. Francis termed brother ass, meaning donkey. But it's a good image of someone who's stubborn, of someone that we uh, get frustrated by. Why? Because it gets tired. I get tired in my body. I get hungry in my body. I have to go to the bathroom in my body. I get distracted in my body. My body is the source of all of this frustration to me. What's the last thing I want when my spirit self gets free and I'm free to be who I want? What do I get? Body. And now I'm back to being limited. I'm in one place at one time. I can't fly. Why do I want a body again? Because that's who we are. That's fundamentally who we are. And who are we? We're very good. In Genesis chapter 1, good, 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 good. And on the sixth day, God created man in his image and likeness, and he was very good. Like us, Jesus in his human nature has a body, and he is most good.